So we left a year, a big year, and we're starting a new year. And this new year that we're starting um, is on the heels of a Saturn-Jupiter conjunction on the 21st of December. So we ended the year and on, the, on the winter solstice with a conjunction of Saturn and Jupiter, which moved us into the age of Aquarius. We, end, we exited an Earth sign and we entered into an air sign in terms of the, uh, the house of air. So it's an entirely new energy. And so this new energy that we entered into uh, begins a 20 year cycle with the return of Saturn and another conjunction in 20 years. And within that cycle of 20 years, there's a 200 year cycle for this beginning of this age of Aquarius and then another 800 year cycle that that exists within. So we are literally exiting one paradigm and entering a completely new paradigm, energetically speaking, vibrationally speaking, astrologically speaking. And so it's a reset for a completely new influence, cosmology speaking. And that's a big deal. That's a big deal, right? And at the beginning of this year, we have the opportunity to kind of do a review and look at what we may be experiencing, or at least the influences that are present. And then, and then we get to kind of look at how those influences are going to manifest over the course of the, of the year through the different things that happen. So last year when we did this, I talked about the age of manifestation, like the, 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 this whole conjunction at the, and I said that we we're going to build up to this age of manifestation at the end of, of this powerful manifestation that's going to be this thing at the end of 2020 in uh, December 21st for the, for the winter solstice. So now that we've kind of like exploded the end of that year and we're moving into this year, what do we have to expect? What does 2020 have to offer us in terms of dynamics? What should we look at energetically speaking, personally speaking, and then in terms of a whole, what are the things that I feel like are important for us to dialogue about? So I do have some things, but first let's look at the dynamics of the year. What are the different energies that are playing out? So let's start with the Chinese astrology perspective, right? So this we are entering into on February 12th, because the Chinese New Year starts on February 12th. We're entering into what's called the metal ox, right? The ox is a yin energy, and it represents the energies of autumn. So we're looking at these two parts of this particular Chinese, this is the way the Chinese astrology looks. There's a metal aspect, and then there's an ox element. And we want to look at what those two look like together in context and how that plays out. So let's look at some of the symbology of these things, and then we're going to look at some of the astrological symbology as well. So the symbology of metal, the idea of metal. First of all, metal is is one of, a, one of the five elements of Chinese medicine. And it's interesting because Sanskrit doesn't have metal as an element. So the Chinese have, the met, have metal, but Sanskrit does not. So it's interesting how that's in that particular culture, there's another layer of influence that they use. So the metal is minerals, crystal. It's the gems of the world, obviously. Uh, it's the aspect of the diamond or the crystal within us that's being refined, right? It's very similar to the air element, which is found in the Western paradigms, which is basically the age of Aquarius because age of Aquarius is an air symbol. So autumn is the energy of metal. And it's the time that nature rids itself of what is not needed. It's a transition from one phase to another phase. It sheds its leaves. It lets go of all the stuff it doesn't need. And it's in transition into something else. And those leaves and that debris produces its own compost. It enriches the soil. And then it ensures the next cycle has exactly the nutrients it needs in order to grow. So... That's the energy of autumn, and metal has that representation of that. It's very, it's, it has that energy of that. So autumn, or at least metal, has the, um, the attributes of letting go, of cutting, letting go and cutting, of, of righteousness, of simplicity. Those are all characteristics of metal in, in, in the behavior of humans. And it's like, it's like bringing up stuff, letting go of stuff, to bring stuff up, and to have stuff be kind of born anew. And so metal is, uh, 
is an energy of decisiveness, justice, righteousness. It's about good leadership. It's about solid decision making. So metal is very stable. It's a very stable thing. And it is yin, which means it's feminine. It's a feminine approach. So if you want to look at metal, you have to look at both sides of metal. There's a balanced and healthy relationship to metal. And then there's the uh, dysfunctional or the weak uh, side of metal, the under, under undervaluated side of metal. So it's important to understand that metal is the influence as a general thing, but it could go on both sides, right? It can have, you can have a balanced relationship to it or a dysfunctional relationship to it. So when we look at the balanced relationship to the idea of the concept of metal, we're looking at righteousness, inner strength, courage, a kind of minimalism to a certain degree. So there's a stark, there's kind of a minimalism to it, just like the starkness of autumn to a degree, um, once everything's fallen. There's determination and it's simplicity. Right? The, the, the dysfunctional side of metal leads to jealousy, grief, guilt, forcefulness, controlling, and interesting, I put this in there, lung issues, which is reminis reminiscent of what we're dealing with in terms of COVID. So it's just something to be aware of. Now, the idea and the energy of metal combined with ox, right? Now, ox is one of the symbols, one of the archetypes in the Chinese medicine. Ox has a whole bunch of symbology too, which I want to go over. It's very hardworking and methodical. Uh, people born in the year of Ox are strong and reliable. They're fair. They're conscientious. They're inspiring. They inspire confidence in others. They're calm. It's patient. It's methodical. It can be trusted. Right? It's grounded. It's grounded in this metal. It's a fixed thing. Although um, they can also be opinionated but they believe it's a, it's a strong belief in themselves and they're stubborn and but it's an energy that has that real righteous quality to it and they don't you know ox people don't temper easily they don't anger easily they don't become explosive and they're not that impulsive so it's a slow moving energy to a degree it's serious and it's quiet so it's not naturally sociable so it can make, make the energy of ox seem a little dull and quiet and kind of boring, right? Given the fact that we've had so much drama, that this is going to be a contrast in this energy because it's going to be more, more simplicity, less activity, but not necessarily um, less, less uh, substance, not less substance. It's just going to be quieter in its expression. So there's a lot of common sense in the ox. So when we combine the quality of metal, and we combine that with ox, you have this metal ox, which is the year of 2021, which starts in February 12, according to the, the Chinese calendar. This is what we're gonna look, this is what it looks like for, for the energy in terms of uh, astrological terms in Chinese medicine. It's gonna be a year when wood, when work, your work, your slow, your, your grooving, slow paced work, as you do it, will get rewarded. And everyone gets lucky with ox because it's kind of a lucky sign, right? And so in terms of money this year, if you make effort, there's, there's a lot of luck and possibility. So the yin energy of ox is quiet but poignant. And this is going to be a year where we, um, we feel the weight of our responsibilities, a year when it's necessary to, to, to really stay steadfast in our efforts if we want to accomplish anything. So this year is not explosive, potentially, in, in the energy of the ox. It's not about catastrophic, right? It's, and supposedly, because of that energy and that influence, it's a favorable year for economic recovery, consolidation, long-term investments, and for creating a reserve of stuff for the, for the upcoming years. So in the energy of ox, yin, and metal, this is what we have available to us as an influence. So it's also very attuned to family life, peaceful, and things get resolved and solved. So the idea is that through discipline and consistent behavior, the ox will create more resolved energy, but we will have to put in effort to do it. So you, it's not about being lazy. You have to do the work in order to create the outcome. And it's probably not going to move as dramatically or as fast as you're used to. 
because we've, if you look at it, we've moved out of an earth sign into an air sign. So an earth sign is very grounded and very pragmatic, and an air sign is very abstract. So when we look at ox, it has that, it aligns to that air sign, and it says, you know, you're going to have to put effort in, but it's going to be very, it's going to be slow moving as we kind of build up. So it brings career advancements, success, prosperity, and wellness in all the different signs of the Chinese New Year. So the idea of ox, metal ox, is this kind of, it's kind of stability. It has a, it's, there's a strong, and if you just think of the energy of an ox, it's strong, it's stable, it's not easily angered, you know? It seems passive, but it's not passive. It's doing its thing, it's making its way, it's not... It's not, a, it's not a, an agitated sign. It's a very stable sign, which we really need. Let's be clear. After a year of drama and intensity and trauma and toxicity and rhetoric and like explosiveness of all the astrology that we had of the last year, this steadfast kind of energy of Ox feels like a relief to some of the things we've had, right? So when we talk about it in Chinese medicine in terms of elements, that's what you're looking at. That's the influence. And that's a yin influence, a feminine influence. So that feminine influence is going to create that kind of softness around the movement of things moving forward. That's the energy we have available to us. But remember that that can be bastardized too. So just because that's the, the potential of that energy doesn't mean that there's not jealousy, grief, guilt, forcefulness, and controlling energy that's, that's when it's in dysfunction. That's what it looks like. So that's the Chinese element, the Chinese medicine way of looking at the new year. Now, if we look at traditional astrology, 